school is really hard to get into. You need to have a backup plan. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm clearly in a different place than I was for the last two weeks. I have officially moved into a new house in Blacksburg. So I'm out of my apartment, which is super exciting because last time I was filming this on the balcony of my apartment and it was a little chaotic. This is going to be one of two parts for my journey to vet school. I ended up recording it and it was way too long. So I'm gonna split it up into two videos. So I wanted to spend today's video chatting a little bit about my journey to vet school because it's a question that I've been asked quite a few times and I wanted to be able to share with you guys my GPA, my academic experiences, as well as my animal experiences and why I made the decisions that I did. So I am in-state at Virginia. I decided that I wanted to go to both an in-state school and financially, it was only really reasonable for me to go to an in-state vet school as well. So if finances are anything of concern to you, I highly recommend trying to prioritize your in-state school because you're gonna end up a little less in debt than you may otherwise, if that's an option to you. So I knew right off the bat in high school that if I wanted to go to vet school, I needed to go to the school that would set me up to have the best chances of getting into the vet school. Since I wanted to go to Virginia, Maryland because it was in state, I thought I need to go to Virginia Tech because one, right off the bat, you get set up to go into animal labs and you get hands-on experience with sheep and other animals that I had never touched before. You get to gain those experiences immediately rather than having to separately get them on your own. So I figured, okay, this is the perfect program for me. I can get the hands-on animal experience in labs. I can join the equestrian team. I can be in pre-vet club and I'm going to be right in the same place where the vet school is to try to help make and form any connections that I possibly can to the vet school. So I went to Virginia Tech for undergrad. I ended up graduating in three years and full disclosure, I did get into vet school my first attempt. So I'm not gonna sit here and try to pretend that I had the easiest or the hardest time getting into vet school because I did get in my first try and I did graduate a year early. But having said that, I did withdraw from a class my freshman year, which is something that I mentioned in my first video. I withdrew from general chemistry my first semester. I was going to fail it with, I think, a 30%. I was going to like fail it, fail it. So I knew that I could not have that on my transcript. So I decided to take that big fat W and drop the class. But I waited until the last possible moment to drop the class because I wanted to gain as much possible information that I could so that when I did retake it, I would have a good solid baseline of information for when I learned the information a second time. I got my tears out and I took the big W on my transcript, but everything that people always tell you throughout all of your educational years prior to vet school is, oh, vet school is really hard to get into. You need to have a backup plan. Okay, so here's the thing. Backup plans, in my opinion, are great if you're not sure if you wanna to go to vet school. Like let's say you're kind of contemplating between going to vet school or maybe becoming a marine biologist and taking a more research approach to things. So if you're contemplating, if you actually want to go to vet school, then sure, having a backup plan is a fantastic idea. But if you know that you wanna to go to vet school, I just don't think that the approach that a lot of people take by telling you how hard it is and how you need to have a backup plan is really the best approach because it ends up putting doubt in students and it ends up making them maybe not believe in themselves when in reality, if you really wanna to go to vet school, 
You may not get in your first time, second, third, whatever, but if this is what you want to do, you shouldn't let anyone tell you otherwise. In reality, if you really want to go to vet school, you should reach out for help if you are struggling with anything. And in all honesty, you shouldn't let anyone tell you that it's not an option for you. When I withdrew from a science course my very first semester of undergrad, when people started saying, you know, you really need to start having a backup plan, it hits you a little bit harder than it did before then because you start to doubt yourself, you start to think, you know, maybe I'm not actually cut out for this or whatever. You are cut out for this. It's just a matter of making it happen. And I don't appreciate how people don't take the approach of supporting you, but rather telling you how much you need a backup plan. So that's my little rant on that. But anyways, when I did withdraw, people started telling me I really need to reconsider vet school. You know, maybe there's other things that I want to do. But I decided to turn right back around and take general chemistry during winter break. Um, so just a few weeks after I finished taking it in the fall semester. I figured that taking it right away would help me retain any information that I had learned um, taking it during the fall. And I ended up getting, I think, a B minus in the class the second time around which is obviously much better than a 30%. When I took second semester, I took it immediately after the winter session, which helped because I didn't have any gap in time. Um, and I think that that helped smooth out the transition a little bit. I still struggled in second semester Gen Chem taking it for the first time, but I managed to get a C plus and I didn't have to withdraw again. So I did manage to bounce back and the word that I always harp on is resilience, and this is the experience that really ingrained resiliency into me. This is what taught me how to bounce back from challenges, bounce back from setbacks, and also it helped me understand that I need to follow my own passion, and if people want to tell me that maybe I should have a different passion, I decided that I didn't really want to listen to that. So that's what really kicked things off in the right direction for me. Because after that moment, I started making my own decisions rather than what I thought was the right decision to make. The summer after my first year of undergrad, I decided to take organic chemistry at a community college. So I took both semesters at Northern Virginia Community College and it, was easily one of the greatest decisions that I made in undergrad. I was able to get a 3.7 overall GPA for that summer for both semesters of lecture and lab. I was able to then jump right into my other subjects of classes the following year without having to worry about taking organic chemistry in a class full of 300 students at this very large university and I actually did pretty decently in it, which really helped my confidence in chemistry as well, because I felt that I could never do any chemistry. I thought that it was my absolute weakness and my absolute downfall. And while it is still my weakness, it is not my downfall. When I applied to vet school, I ended up having a 3.45 cumulative science GPA, which took into account both Virginia Tech and my community college science GPAs combined. And then I had an overall VEMCAS GPA of a 3.42. So not the greatest, but also not the worst GPA in the world. And that's why I knew that only applying to Virginia, Maryland, where they do take that holistic approach was my best option because I knew that I was not going to be the strongest candidate in GPA. I wanted to be able to kind of showcase my other strengths, my other experiences, and the other things that I had to offer other than just my GPA. However, with that being said, 
I was able to really, really highlight how if I was to fail something in vet school, which I have done, I have failed exams in vet school and it was only year one. So if I was to fail something in vet school, I know how to bounce back from it, which is true because I finished and passed my first year, even though it was not all smooth sailing. And that's not something I'm ashamed of because I do think it's important to highlight that not everyone just sails through easily. It's always been in both undergrad and in vet school, a little bit of a learning curve for how I need to study for things, which I'll do an entirely separate video on, but it's been a learning curve for how to study for things and what I need to do to test well, because I think that I've struggled a little bit with testing as well. And it's something that I'm still learning. I mean, I'm going into second year in August and I'm sure I'm going to encounter classes that I will still be adapting how I need to study and how I need to prepare for these tests. So showing that I was able to come back from those struggles in undergrad, I think really helped strengthen my application for showing the admissions committee that if I struggle in vet school, it's not gonna be my end all be all. So comment down below if you have any questions or if you relate to the whole thing related to general chemistry or having struggled in a science class and how you're worried how that's going to affect you. I'm always here to support you guys. You can find me on Instagram and DM me there if you'd rather have a private conversation. And like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm so excited to see you guys next week. Bye, guys.